Let's take a closer look at how the Smart Knob View works, and I'll also show you how I built it. If you didn't see my previous video, the Smart Knob is an input device that can spin smoothly, or it can provide software defined detents and end stops using an internal brushless motor. Click the link right here if you want to see a longer demo of it. But we'll jump right into things by removing the cover. This is an MJF 3D print from JLC PCB, which just snaps into place with these rounded tabs on the inside. Now, it's going to be easier to look at this on my desk, so let's unmount this from the wall. These four M2 screws separate the PCB from the backplate, and then we can just pull on these adhesive strip tabs to release it from the wall. Without the cover, we can see a lot of the electronics, like this ESP32 module. But let's also pull off the knob so we can get a better view. Inside, the knob has slots which fit onto the spokes on the motor and avoid this chin on the LCD. And on top, it's got a 39.5mm watch crystal glued in place that protects the LCD. So let's talk about the internal components. Obviously you can see the round LCD on the top here. This is a GC9A01 240x240 LCD, info in the description, and it's suspended above the motor with a custom PCB and some more 3D printed pieces. We'll look at those a little bit later. Below the LCD is the brushless gimbal motor. The cool thing about this motor is that it's got a 6mm hollow shaft, which is how the LCD's power and data wires pass through without getting all twisted when you turn the motor. And this is where I have to address the elephant in the room. You can't buy this motor. I can't buy this motor either. Unfortunately, these were probably excess stock and are no longer in production, so as soon as I published the first Smart Knob video, all of them were sold out immediately. The good news is that there's been a ton of interest in the project, so there's some very active discussion about finding a good replacement. We may even get some motors custom manufactured if we can't find an existing product. I really want all of you to be able to build one of these yourself. You can follow along with the motor discussion on GitHub, but let's keep exploring how the smart knob works. Let's say we want there to be six virtual points. If the motor applies no torque, the knob can spin freely letting us choose from those six options. But it doesn't provide any physical feedback. Now let's program the motor so that it always applies torque towards the nearest detent. Since you can't feel the torque through the video, I've added this red arrow to visualize the torque. When you're to the right of the detent, it pulls to the left to return to the center. And if you're to the left, it will pull to the right. If you cross the halfway point between detents, the torque changes direction and starts pulling towards the next point. That's exactly the snap feeling we wanted. However, there's one problem. Since we're always applying torque in one direction or another, it never settles down even when it's reached the center of the virtual detent. So what we can do is make the amount of torque vary based on the distance to the snap point. Or in other words, make the torque proportional to the angular error. Now it pulls weakly when you're near the center point and gets stronger as you get further away. That looks much better. And we still have the snap behavior when you cross the midway point between detents. So to make those virtual detents work, we clearly need to know the angle of the knob at all times. To do that, I'm using this MT6701 magnetic encoder chip. It's basically a high resolution digital compass that can measure the angle of the magnetic field. Think of it kind of like this. On the bottom of the motor, there's a magnet attached to the rotor this black ring. This magnet has a magnetic field that's split across the diameter. Using magnetic viewing film, you can see this white line that divides the poles. So, if we place the motor with that magnet directly above the magnetic encoder chip, it can measure the exact angle of rotation at any point in time. This brings about a mechanical challenge. The magnetic encoder chip needs to be centered directly below the motor, but we also need to support the LCD and run wires to it through the center of the motor. The solution is this 3D printed piece. It's got a hollow shaft that mechanically supports the LCD above the motor. On the bottom, there's a rectangular cutout for the magnetic encoder and a slot so that the LCD's wires can be routed to the side of the magnetic encoder and through an offset hole on the PCB. The cylinder has to be less than six millimeters in diameter in order to fit through the motor, 
but that leaves us with a very small area to attach the much wider LCD PCB. So I created this small 3D printed adapter piece that snaps onto the top of the cylinder and provides a wider surface for mounting the LCD PCB. The adapter is keyed so that it can't rotate on the cylinder, and on the top side it has a pin that keeps the LCD PCB from rotating once assembled. All of these pieces are pretty small with tight snap fit tolerances, so this is a perfect time to talk about this video's sponsor, JLC PCB. While you may know that JLC PCB provides online ordering for custom circuit boards and PCB assemblies, they've also recently launched an online 3D printing service with both SLA resin prints and MJF nylon prints available for great prices. All of the 3D printed parts I've shown here were made by JLC PCB and arrived exactly as shown. No cleanup or post-processing was necessary. Ordering is easy, just upload your STL files, choose your printing options, and check out. Speaking of PCB manufacturing, let's actually go back in time so I can show you a little more about how the main PCB is built. Similar to previous projects like my tiny Nintendo Switch ornament, I'm going to be hand assembling this PCB and reflow soldering it. The process starts by taking a solder stencil, which I ordered along with the bare PCBs, and squeezing some solder paste through all of the holes and onto the PCB's exposed pads. Then I place each component into the appropriate slot, starting with the smallest resistors and capacitors. But with so many small components, you might be wondering how I know where each is supposed to go. I'm using a really awesome plugin for KiCad called Interactive HTML Bill of Materials, which automatically generates a website showing you where each component belongs, and it lets you check them off as you place them. Often you'll use the same component in multiple places, like these 21 identical capacitors, so this makes it really easy to see where they all belong. To drive the brushless gimbal motor, I'm using a relatively new chip from Trinamic, the TMC6300, which is perfect for low voltage and low current brushless motors, though its size makes it a little tricky to assemble at home. In the opposite corner, I'm installing a high resolution analog to digital converter, which gets paired with some strain gauge sensors that measure how much the PCB flexes. Yep, you heard that right, this PCB can measure its own mechanical deformation. Weird flex, but okay. Finally, we've got the magnetic encoder that goes smack dab in the middle and gets surrounded by a ring of eight side-firing addressable RGB LEDs. By using side-firing LEDs and a white PCB, I was able to get a fairly diffuse and relatively even glow without needing some kind of physical diffuser piece. Then the whole PCB gets plopped onto a hot plate and heated to over 200 degrees Celsius until the solder melts. Now, remember how I said this PCB has a weird flex? And maybe you notice that there are interesting slots cut out of the PCB around the motor? That's because the entire motor mount on the PCB is designed to bend ever so slightly when you press in on the knob, supported by these four thin spokes. This way you can press the knob to click through menus or confirm a selection. However, because the PCB and knob barely even move when you do this, it would be hard for you to know whether you've pressed hard enough for the click to register. There's a pretty easy solution to that. We can trick your brain with a bit of haptic feedback using the knob's motor. As soon as you've pressed hard enough, the motor gives a super short kick to simulate the tactile click feeling of a button. And then as you let up, the motor gives another weaker kick, simulating a button snapping back when released. To measure the PCB's flexure, I mounted four strain gauge sensors to two of the spokes on the back of the PCB. After putting two drops of CA glue on the bare surface of the PCB, I used polyamide or Kapton tape to hold the strain gauges in place while the glue cures. The strain gauges get wired up to a few pads on the PCB, which connect to the high resolution ADC I mentioned earlier. The reason for having four strain gauges is to form what's called a Wheatstone bridge. Essentially, it makes the strain gauge readings less sensitive to temperature effects. The last two pieces that need to be hand soldered to the back of the PCB are the motor connector and this VEML7700 ambient light sensor. The ambient light sensor allows the LCD and RGB LED ring to automatically adjust to different lighting conditions and avoid becoming a blinding light in a dark room. Normally you'd find an ambient light sensor like this on the front or top surface, like on your phone, but I wanted to keep the front surface free of unnecessary holes. So on the smart knob, I pointed the light sensor out of the back where it sits just barely above the surface that it's mounted to. The last bit of electronics to take a look at is the screen. The round LCD has a 12 pin flex cable that gets soldered to the PCB, along with a few resistors, capacitors, and a MOSFET for dimming the LCD's backlight. 
To connect this to the main PCB and the microcontroller, there are 8 wires that need to be soldered to the PCB and then routed back through the center of the PCB and the 3D printed support column. I'm using 30 AWG wire wrapping wire for this since space is pretty tight. Once all the wires were fed through and the motor was screwed into place, I used a multimeter in continuity mode to figure out which wire is which before soldering them to the matching pads on the main PCB. Finally I used thin VHB foam tape to permanently mount the LCD, and the knob just slides down over the top. To mount the smart knob view to a wall or other surface, you can either use the four screw holes in the corners of the backplate, or it's designed to work really well with removable adhesive strips, with special cutouts that make them super easy to remove later. Just apply the adhesive strips, stick it to the wall, and then screw down the main PCB. The cover just snaps into place, and you can power it up with a USB-C plug. If you want to remove it, just take off the cover, unscrew the PCB, and pull on the adhesive tabs through those holes in the backplate. If you want to keep up with firmware development, new uses for the SmartNob View, or other projects in the future, make sure you're subscribed. And a huge thank you to everyone who has sponsored me on GitHub, and thank you for watching.